Welcome to Shower Talk with Allie, where no topic is off limit. I hope you guys are doing great today. Um, I'm gonna dive right in, but if you guys enjoy my channel, if you could just like and subscribe and ring that bell, because I have videos coming out every single week about topics that are wild and crazy and fun and serious. Today, I wanna talk about um, a topic about my husband, actually, and it's a topic and it, I get a lot and questions I get a lot asked a lot about about our marriage and caregiving. Is he my husband? Is he my caregiver? Is he my lover? Um, yes, check, 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 kind of all of the above. And I wanted to dive into how we make this work because I'm a quadriplegic. I'm paralyzed from the chest down. My little paws, as I call them, they're paralyzed. I can raise my wrists up like this and I can move my arms, but I can't lift my arm up. So my triceps are paralyzed. So that basically leaves me, like many other quadriplegics, there's only a few I know who can do this on their own, basically dependent on another human being to do bladder and bowel and help me go to the bathroom and the shower and getting me dressed and getting me water and getting me food. Oh my gosh, the list goes on. But today I wanted to kind of dive into what does it mean and how we make it work in a relationship with, we're called an interabled couple. <laughs> I don't really, I, I, that's a fine word, but I think we're just a couple. In any event, um, I will dive into a lot of different videos of you know, how Aaron and I met and how I slowly introduced him over the course of a year into all of the caregiving kind of duties, I guess, that my caregivers are responsible for. But I, I wanted to start out by just talking about the difference in our relationship between the lover part and the caregiving part. First and foremost, my husband, Aaron, he is my husband and he's my partner for life. And yes, that definitely includes caregiving too, but we were in it together and he knew when we got married because we started dating when I was in a, in a wheelchair already and I was already in bed that um, there's a lot that comes with me. So most couples don't, have the added challenges of having to take care of each other. You say in sickness and in health when you're married, and I know people really mean that, but sometimes when you have a really big um, trauma in your life, some people can't handle it and that's okay. But you know, Aaron knew what he was getting into. And so first and foremost, my husband is my sexy man who I find attractive, who I wanna have sex with and go on vacations with, number one. But when we're at home on a regular basis, I do have caregivers. So some people I know um, have their spouses who are their full-time caregivers. Please don't misunderstand me. I love my husband, but if he had to be my caregiver 24 hours, I would probably kill him. Probably kill anybody for that long, 24 seven, 24 hours a day. Plus nobody can do it that long. I have caregivers right now, um, five, six days a week, about 12 hours a day. And so, you know, when you find a great caregiver, you're so fortunate. I mean, this is another topic on caregivers, which I will get into. But when you find great ones, you keep them. And when you find a great caregiver, you know, they're part of the family and they come in and they help you. But you have to understand that at the end of their eight hour shift, their 12 hour shift, whatever it may be, they get to go home, they're off the clock. And it's about their life, right? So they have to make a distinction. Well, they should, or most people do, between life and um, work. And if you have a great relationship, that's just an added benefit. So when you have a spouse that's taking care of you, and so Aaron does that for me on vacations, um, and we've gone on many vacations together, and it took a while to get there, but he is my caregiver 24 seven, seven days a week if we go on vacation for like two weeks. That's a lot for any human being to constantly take care of another human being and themselves at the same time. So how do we make that work? So the way we make it work is through compromise. So I am the type of person, I'm a type A personality. I like to have things done in a certain way at a certain time. I'm super organized. Some say OCD, neurotically organized. I like to get dressed in a certain way. And one of my caregivers or new people that come into my life, I can teach them this. But with my husband, you know, we, we get things done, but in a different manner. And especially when we're on vacation, there's that level of compromise that we have to just have. Otherwise he would be running around all the time, catering to my physical caregiving needs and then having to rush to get dressed. And then we go out on adventures and I have this huge schedule every time we go on a vacation 
where I want to get all these things done. And sometimes we don't get to, and that's okay. Because he reminds me, he says, sweetie, even when I'm doing your caregiving and you know, like I said, there's no topic off limit and I'm helping you go to your bathroom and I have to put my, your fingers on my thumb or change your catheter or whatever, it's quality time together, right? It's not just about going to a travel location and swimming in a pool and having pina coladas. It's about a lot more than that. But I get these incredible feelings of guilt for people just taking care of me generally because I'm so strong-minded and I like to do everything myself. Now, I can't help myself physically all the time, but mentally, you know, I, you know, I can rock it out and help anybody with anything they need. Um, but with Aaron, when we're on a trip, I mean, he has to get up in the morning, he has to help me go to the bathroom, he has to get me dressed, he has to put shirt on, put my earrings on, I can do my own makeup, thank God. Wash my hair, straighten my hair, not every day. And I've watched him a couple times on vacation and he never complains and he's such a sweetheart. But you know what? It takes a toll on him. I can see it. And as a wife and also a quadriplegic, I have to be really mindful of that. And sometimes be like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna work on my phone. You just, you just relax, just chill out on the bed. But I mean, it's incredible that another human being, when you have love and understanding and compassion, will do that for another person. I don't really know a lot of people that will. I mean, you would like to say, uh, when you meet somebody, you see somebody in a wheelchair, oh, I can handle that. Well, frankly, some people just can't. It's okay if they can't handle that, but you know, I found an amazing solo can. Now we don't always get along and sometimes we get in fights on scheduling and how to unpack and all of that, or maybe I get frustrated and you know, he compromises too and I compromise. Like there's so much compromise on each side. And you know, one challenge I run into sometimes just being quadriplegic is that because I can't be left alone for long periods of time, and some quads can, that I have to kind of hold my tongue at times. And you know, this is hard because when you get in a fight and you're a regular couple, when I say regular, two people that aren't paralyzed um, or disabled or injured or whatever it may be, they can take an hour and they can roll out of the room, walk out of the room and come back and say their apologies. But when you're in an interabled couple, you don't always have that luxury, right? And it's it can be maddening, you know, trying to hold your tongue sometimes. And, you know, that's something that I work on and, and he works on it as well, because if somebody just leaves me, I then, the only thing in life that really gives me true anxiety is not all of my medical procedures and not even being paralyzed or not having my little paws, is being left alone physically and something happening to me, falling on the floor, uh, my catheter getting clogged and there's nobody there to help me. So I've had to learn from a personal perspective how to sometimes you know, just hold my tongue and cool down, but cool down quickly, compartmentalize mentally, and then talk about it afterwards. So I mean, you know, my husband and hey, my mom, my caregivers, my mom has done this for, you know, just off topic for a second for, you know, over 10 years now. And she's been alone with me for weeks on end and she's in her seventies and we have such a great time together. And I feel horrible because who wants when a caregiver bails on you that your 70 something year old mother has to take care of you. I mean, it's, it's awful. I mean, she's in great shape and she's amazing, but those are my own feelings of guilt. She's happy to help me. We laugh together and have a great time, but um, it's challenging. It's not easy and you know, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I see so many videos of, you know, interable couples uh, on YouTube and they have, you know, it's really cool and I, I see them doing it together and I would love for my husband to not have a job and come home and sit right here with me and we do our YouTube channel together and we'll do a couple channels, you know, we'll do a couple videos together, but he's not because he's out working hard. I'm working hard. I'm trying to get, you know, YouTube up and going because I just, you know, I want to pay forward and hopefully somebody can take a message, you know, from my videos and say, I know exactly what she's talking about. Even if you're not paralyzed or disabled and you know, you're in a situation where you have to hold your tongue and you're married and you just figuring out how to cool off that you're not alone and we all go through it together. Um, you know, being married is tough. <laughs> there, I said it, it's tough. I love it and I love him, but you know, you constantly have to work at it. I mean, that's no secret. I think sometimes you have to work at it a little bit more when one or the other, when one person in a relationship has a disability, um, you know, and I get this from my friends all the time that they feel like a burden um, to many of their spouses. But, you know, coming back to my husband and how great he is and that when he's his caregiver 24 seven, he's got to wear all these hats. 
caregiver, lover, husband, sex partner, you name it. You know, and he lifts me up. Every time I go on vacation, he lets me choose where to go. He lets me plan it. I always choose a tropical location and I always choose somewhere that has a pool. When a lot of times we go, there's no pool lift. So he lifts me up like a fireman like this and he throws me overboard into the pool. I mean, it's great, but that's a lot of lifting, right? I think of like 140, 145 or something. And you know, that's regular, I guess for five, nine in my height. But I mean, that, that's a big weight lift for him. And you know, that tires him out. So, you know, I'll always say, I always say, you know, to your spouse, whatever your situation, even if they forgot to take out the garbage, maybe just be mindful that they have a long day or, you know, just chatting with them. But that's, that's how Aaron and I work through some of our, um, um, you know, caregiving hat and relationship challenges is, you know, by talking to each other. And when you can't talk, sometimes I just, you just need a minute. So I go in my head, I do a lot of self hypnosis and I find my little happy spot and then we work it out always. We always end up working it out. But you know, to those people out there that are caregivers, to parents, to loved ones, you name it. I mean, a huge shout out, you know, it's not, people always say, oh, I'm so sorry that you broke your neck, that must be so hard, but it's equally as challenging for the person that's taking care of you. I mean, even mentally, if you have somebody that you're dating or you're married that suffers from um, clinical depression, I mean, that's a disability as well. And that can be equally as challenging. You just can't see that disability, the invisible disabilities. I just get to wear mine on the outside. So I, you know, sometimes get to pull the quad card where I mean, I can't help if people feel sorry for me and they want me to cut the line and get something for them. I said, well, thank you. That's really nice. All right. So that's it for today. A little bit of, you know, dive into my relationship with my husband. I will tune in and see you guys next week. If you like this video, don't forget to like it and ring the bell. And you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook for kind of an update of all of my daily life. I talk about kind of everything from, I mean, from condo floods I've had, to insurance vitals I'm fighting, to caregiving challenges, to bodily challenges, to surgeries I have. I mean, sometimes I even get on YouTube and I love watching other people's lives, but when they're real about it and they're not just sugarcoating everything because it makes, makes the rest of it feel terrible, but um, I like to feel inspired. Hopefully I inspired just one person to kind of think about, you know, the you know, intricacies of, you know, different types of marriages and how they work. All right, I will see you guys on the flip side. Bye.